What is up harvesters? So today I want to talk to you guys about how you can use topography in lieu of screening to hide things like your food plots and your hunter access. So right now I have you guys up on my Northwestern Wisconsin property. We are up here in the big woods wilderness and how I selected where I put my food plots up here has a lot to do with the natural topography. Obviously I can't put a food plot in the side of a hill, but in knowing that, I can also use that topography to hide my food plot so that I don't have to take the time and effort of putting in screening around the edges of it. So right now I have you on what I call my crater plot. Now this is just a small 1 8 of an acre plot, but it fits very nicely into this little almost meteor crater that has topography along every single edge of it, except for this back little corner off the camera. So you know what I did in that open spot off the camera? When I cut all of the trees out of here to make this plot, I stacked my brush pile in that open area. So this little honey hole here in the woods is completely shrouded on all edges. If a deer is standing on the plot here, it cannot see more than maybe 10, 20 yards off into the woods and in any direction, because all it's doing is seeing sort of to the tops of all of these ridges here. And the deer absolutely love this food plot here. Now, what else do you need to do when you're trying to think of using topography for your hunter access and your screening of your food plots? So you guys can see over my left shoulder here is the stand up there on top of that ridge. And that stand is used to hunt this food plot and another food plot further away. There's a travel corridor that runs between the two of them with a mock scrape in there just connecting all of those attractions because this is primarily a gun stand. This Northwestern Wisconsin property is primarily, if not exclusively used just for the gun hunt because it is so far away from home for us. We need to take those extra days off just to get here to hunt it. So since I have the opportunity on my Southeastern Wisconsin property to bow hunt, that's what I do down there and that's what I do up here. I have the two properties, one for gun, one for bow, and it works out great for me that way. Now, on this property though, you can see how this stand is over here. This hill that is screening the food plot then drops off behind over there. So I'm able to access in to that stand down probably 30 feet below where the stand is actually at and there's no way that if a deer's anywhere near this plot that they're going to see me or hear me or smell me coming in now ideally i need some more screening or cover at the base of that stand and i need to hide it better and i have conifers growing it's a long process for that to come to fruition for me but in a perfect world, yes, the stand itself would be even better screened at the top of the hill. But when I walk into here, I'm the guy whose head and rifle are poking up over the top of that hill first. And I'm going to see anything down in here and have a shot at it if I sneak in here well enough. And that's the advantage of using that topography to both hide your hunter access and screen your food plots. Now, the deer are going to be bedded off back off away from the camera since I'm accessing this way. That's where the bedding is. I'm not worried about busting those deer out of bedding coming in through that hunter access either. Now, the other thing is I can show you guys one of our other stands and one of our new food plots that just got put in, how we're utilizing topography to access that stand as well. That stand is very well hidden. It's like perfect in my opinion. You slide right off the road and you slide down into a low depression a low point in topography on the land that's next to a wet area that the deer won't go through because it's too muddy and they don't want to get stuck in there and then you come up the back side of a ridge and you enter where the stand is on the back side of the ridge where this one's on top of the ridge that stand there's actually a nice flat spot halfway up the ridge that you can then climb into the stand see right over the crest of the hill down to where the new food plot is and I'm really excited about that, that stand location and the success that we're gonna have on hunts over there. It's a couple hundred yards through the woods this way. So they, these food plots are very separated. That is something you definitely wanna do on your land. You don't wanna just put one big, huge food plot in the middle. You want little pockets of food plots throughout your land so that your deer herd gets spread out more. So this little food plot here that I call the crater food plot, 
I can guarantee you once this starts growing that I'm gonna have a doe or two and their two or three fawns just pound this all summer long, all fall long to the point that they will eat every meal of the day on this plot. So I need a bunch of little plots to scatter them out. Otherwise I'm just gonna have my does overwhelm them and they're gonna just keep the bucks pushed off out of the area. So using topography to hide them, you can compartmentalize where your deer herd is on a smaller piece of property. You don't need hundreds of acres to do this. You can do this on a small parcel if you want, if you have topography like this to hide all of your attractions because as the deer are attracted to those attractions they will you know come in and look and see oh is there another deer there yeah that's that dominant doe i don't want to mess with her but hey i know there's a food plot over here and i know there's a food plot over here i'm gonna go check those out instead because you know the old mean doe is on that one right now Number if you put them all together they kind of each have to pick their corner of that bigger one and they'll do that too but they do put a lot more stress on each other and you need a lot more room then to pack a lot fewer deer on than if you have this all sort of compartmentalized on your property if you have a property like this with a ton of topography and little pockets and craters and holes like this it's real easy to do and it'll prove for huge success for you guys in the woods this season and beyond now the other thing that we need to talk about when we're talking about topography are your thermals. So when you're hunting, where is your scent going? So this stand is up on top of this hill here, which isn't perfect for hunter access until I get the screening, the conifers and stuff growing in underneath the bottom of it. But what it is excellent for is in the morning when those thermals are going up and everything's warming up and carrying my scent up, because I'm one of the highest things in the woods in this area, my wind or my scent isn't actually blowing down from the stand it's blowing up from the stand and being carried up by the thermals so anything beneath me is not going to scent me and it is actually crazy when i hunt this stand i'll always sit with my face into the wind and have my back to where my scent is blowing and so many times all of a sudden i hear a crunch 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 right behind me and you know, you listen, is it a squirrel, is it a deer? No, that really sounds like a deer. So you slowly turn your head and look behind you and sure enough, there's a doe and her fawn standing right where my wind's blowing. But because they're down in that hole behind me here and the scent is carrying up, I don't have to worry about deer smelling me because I'm taking advantage of the topography in the area to make sure that my scent is being lifted up in the morning. Now in the afternoon, yes, it is going to blow down as things are cooling off in the afternoon. So then yes, if I, the wind is blowing off the backside here of this plot, I am going to have my scent blowing down into the hole behind that blind. But in the afternoon, the deer are going to be headed towards this food source. So I don't really need to worry about the, the thermals coming down as long as the wind direction is not blowing onto this plot. Now, if for some reason we had an afternoon wind that was blowing directly at this plot and it's cooling down so the thermals are bringing the scent down into this hole, that would be a horrible time to hunt that stand and I probably wouldn't do it unless I was super confident that the deer were going to be hitting up the other food plot that this stand can see and not this one. But that, of course, is not going likely to be the case. This is actually their preferred food plot of the two that this stand overwatches. So even though we do have all of this topography around here to hide these deer in here, if you did want to improve it a little more, if you're bored and you just love working in the woods, yeah, you could go about and you could hinge cut some trees up at the top of these ridges. You could plant some conifers in there. You could get some regenerative growth growing in there. Um, you guys can see that the sun is coming down and hitting this plot. That is something you definitely need to have happen if you're trying to put food plots in the woods. But even that being said, there are a few more of these trees that I could cut back to get even more sunlight down to this plot. And if I do that, all of that brush and stuff laying on top of these ridges around here would just add to that screening or to that hiding of the deer on the food plot, which is what they want. They don't actually want to be able to see off into the woods hundreds of yards because then they know everything can see them from hundreds of yards away. They like being in this safe, secluded little pocket. And we are up here in bear and wolf country. If a bear or a wolf did come over the top of one of these ridges, the deer are instantly gonna pick up on that movement and they're gonna shoot out the other side. 
And because it's just topography, I didn't put like hinge cut trees all the way around here. Like I said, I did put my brush pile over here, but it's just in one little area to hide that opening in topography this direction. The deer will shoot right up these hills in any direction and escape wherever they want to. So I'm not making them feel like they're trapped in here, even though they can't see more than maybe 10, 20 yards in any direction once they're standing in here on the plot. Now, if you guys feel like you got some value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.